goodness. I don't know why I start like that every time. I'm like, oh, I got to say something silly, something funny. I really don't. I don't even think about it. I just automatically go, hey, hello. I think it's my coffee. Dunkin' Donuts. Dunkin' Donuts loves Rochester. Whatever. Anyway, my name is Mr. Krause, otherwise known as for the next 20 or 30 minutes, is Mr. Key. If you haven't heard before, all of this material can be found at mrkrausemath.com. There it is, K-R-A-U-S-E, math.com. Should be a link in the show notes as well. Uh, look at that. There's a ad right there. Ad revenue. Hmm. Anyway, you have 33 days. Eight hours and 27 minutes until the Algebra 2 trig regions. Are you ready? I'm ready. And if you want the review material, you can just click on Algebra 2 trig. That'll give you all the old regions exams, all of them. And multiple choice answers, solutions, manuals, everything you wanted to know. If you click on Algebra 2 trig topics, there they are. They're the topics. Oops, let me refresh that so you get the new page because I got all of them up through day eight which is what we're working on right now i just don't have the video done because i'm working on that right now so probably by the time you're watching this video that will actually be a live link day eight we are going to talk about arithmetic sequence geometric sequences and recursion it's not very difficult stuff um, but you do have to memorize these two formulas unlike on the common core if your teacher got you ready for both exams unlike on the common core you're not going to be given these formulas they're not overly difficult, and there's not that much difference between the two of them. The key thing you want to remember about arithmetic is you have to add something. Now, you're either going to add a positive number or a negative number. So, add or subtract, really. But it's really just adding a negative number. In geometric, you're going to multiply. Now, if you multiply by a fraction, that's the same as dividing, but it's still multiplying. So, we're either going to multiply or add. All right, you have to have these formulas memorized. A sub n, it's red A sub n is equal to A sub 1 plus, let me highlight that plus sign, because, hmm, I got a lot of kids that forget the plus sign over and over and over and over and over, should I just keep going? Because it's driving me crazy. N minus 1 times D. Now, A sub 1, first term. N. That's just N. Leave it. It's fine. You have the, on the second term, plug a 2 in. If you're on the th third term, plug a 3 in. D is the common difference. Now, geometric. Got to get it away from my big bald head. Kind of the same. A sub N. Except this time you're going to take A sub 1 and you're going to multiply it. Now, it's not a common difference in this case. It's a common ratio to the n minus 1. All right, so there are the two formulas. Get them memorized. Now, these also can be found on my flashcards. I got lots of flashcards. You know, if you go to studyblue.com, you know, you can just do this. Let me give an example. Study blue, boom, study blue. I probably already logged in, hopefully. There I am, logged in. If you go to my trigonometry deck, 25, 2015, 16, click on that. And then you just say, I want to flip cards. I want to flip them, and I want to do everything, and we're going to do them random, and I'm going to study now. And then just come up. You can check them out. Let's see. What is the definition of the period of a trig curve? Period is the time it takes to complete one full cycle of the curve. Boom. Yes, I nailed it. Done. What's the tangent of 300? Reference angle of 60 degrees. That's really the tangent of 60 degrees, and the tangent of 60 degrees everybody knows is the square root of 3 except that you're in the fourth quadrant, which makes it the negative square root of three. Cut jam! Nailed it! Come over here, study your flashcards. They don't have a lot of these, and you can always just skip them. You know, you can just skip them. Oh, skip them, you know. I to the fourth, do you know that that's equal to one? If you don't know that's equal to one, oops, nailed it, got it wrong. Do you know that this is cotangent? Cotangent, nailed it! And then come back and study, okay? So anyway, let's go through these. Let me uh, get these a little bit bigger. And, all right, so what is the common difference of this arithmetic sequence? Well, they're even telling you it's a common difference. Uh, 
What you do to find the common difference is you take the a sub 2 and you subtract a sub 1. Take the second term and subtract the first term, you get 3. Take the third term and subtract the second term, you get 3. Take the fourth term and subtract the third term, you get 3. The common difference is equal to 3. That's all there is to it. What's the common ratio? Now this, they're telling you that we're not adding. I mean, clearly, I'm not going to add something to, from 8 to get to negative 16 and then add that same thing to get to positive 32. That doesn't even make any sense. So what are we going to do? We're going to multiply by something. The way to figure out what that multiplying is, is notice when I found the common difference, I subtracted. When I want the ratio, a ratio is a fraction. You know, this is 1 to 2. That's a fraction. So if you want to find the common ratio, you just divide. You're going to take the second term and divide it by the first term. You get negative 16 over 8, negative 2. Take the third term, divide it by the second term. Notice this is basically the same thing. You get 32 over negative 16. Oh, that's negative 2. And if you just keep going, you'll find out that the common ratio is negative 2. 3. Now we're going to get busy. Write the formula for the nth term of the sequence shown below. So I didn't tell you whether it's arithmetic or it's geometric. You have to decide. Okay, look, I'm adding two, adding two. Add, oh, okay, this is arithmetic, I'm adding two. So my first term, a sub one is 10, and my common difference is two, boom. Um, I'm gonna modify these questions just a little bit, just to, for fun. So I know that a sub n is equal to 10 plus, I think everybody seems to forget, n minus 1 times the common difference, which is 2. Now, if you're, that probably won't be your answer. You're probably going to have to clean it up by just distributing the 2, not the 10. So you get 2n minus 2. So your final answer for this one would be, a sub n is equal to 2n plus 8. Now let's think if that makes sense. If I plug a 1 in, 2 times 1 is 1, 2, plus 8 is 10. If I plug a 2 in, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 8 is 12. Now, what if they ask for the sum of the first 25 numbers in the sequence? Now you could do it 18. 20, 22, 24, 26, 20, and then get them all, and then add them up. Or you can use your calculator. So let's use our calculator. So you go into this crazy button right here. It's right here. It's in red now. And you click on the summation one. Oh, man, it doesn't like me. All right, I got to do it this way. Escape. Enter. All right. And uh, n equals 1. I said the first 15 terms, didn't I? n from 1 our thing is 2n plus 8, and we go up here, and we plug in, uh, oops, I said 15, 15 terms. Boom, done, 360, 360. Okay. What is the first term of a geometric, oh, if the first term of a geometric sequence is 27, and the fourth term is 64, what is the common ratio? Hmm. So the first term is 27. And the fourth term is 64. And I gotta find the common ratio? Ooh. Well, let's see if I can do that. This is a sub one. And this is a sub four. Hmm. So the formula would be a sub n equals a sub 1, I don't know what that ratio is to the n minus 1. Hmm. This is actually a rather tricky question. Well, we're going to say n equals 4. So a sub 4 is 64 equals 27 r to the n minus 1. So let me get rid of this so I have room to work, sorry. I should have done this backwards. Now I'm going to divide by 27. So I get 64 over 27. Don't put that in your calculator. Is equal R. Oh, and I forgot. Sorry about this. We said R was 4. Shoot, not R was 4. N was 4. Because we're using the fourth term. 
four minus three. Every time I do a four, it looks like a dog on nine. So this is three. That should be four minus one, three. So I got r cubed equals this. Well, how do I find r? Oh, I just take the cube root. Take the cube root, and I get r equals, the cube root of 64 is 4, and the cube root of 27 is 3. So my ratio is 4 thirds. Now, how do I find the formula? a sub n is equal to a sub 1, which is 27, 4 thirds to the n minus 1. Now, you should check that just to make sure we're right. We're going to check, we'll see what a sub 4 is. 27 4 thirds to the 4 minus 1. Come over to our calculator. 27, parenthesis, 4 divided by 3, oops, excuse me, 3, parenthesis, raised to the 3. 64, perfect, perfect, we checked it. Now what if I asked you, what if I said, okay, I don't want the, I got the sequence, I got this formula, this is the formula, and I said, okay, what's the sum of the first eight terms? So, you could just try to add all those up. Man, they're going to get crazy, and you could get some really freaky, crazy decimal or fraction, and you don't want that. So let's just use the summation button. I said the first eight, right? So sum, sum of first eight. I guess at eight. Who knows? I'm old. N equals one to eight, and then we're just going to use this formula right here. 27 four-thirds to the n minus one. All right, type that puppy in. Let's see. Go to summation. There it is. There it is. And where's that? N, 1, 8, and then 27, parentheses. Where's my parentheses? 4 divided by 3, parentheses, raised to the N minus 1. There it is. Press enter. There it is. Some redunculous answer. All right. I'll be right back, kitties. Okay, I'm back. Let's see what we got here. I can't seem to get anything moving. There's five. Let's see what we got. All right. A sequence has the following terms. A sub 1 is 4. A sub 2 is 10. A sub 3 is 25. A sub 62.5. Write a formula that represents the nth term of the sequence. Again, I'm not telling you if this is arithmetic or geometric. You have to decide. So your numbers are 4, 10, 25, and 62.5. Well, to go from here to here, I add 6. To go from here to here, I add 15. Not arithmetic. Right there, I just cancel, cancel, cancel. It's not arithmetic. So the only thing it could be is geometric. So I'm hoping it's geometric. So we're going to find that common ratio. 10 divided by 4, that's 5 halves. Or 2.5, which I really don't like, 2.5. A ratio is 25 to 10, which reduces to 5 halves. And ratio of 62.5 to 25. I have no idea if that reduces to, to 5 halves or 2.5. So I might come over here and I go 62.5 divided by 25. If it's 2.5, okay, so there's my common ratio. My common ratio is 5 halves. So my formula is going to be a sub n equals first term 4 common ratio 4. Uh, Oh, excuse me, just found the common ratio. 5 over 2 raised to the n minus 1. Catching. What is the formula for the n term in this sequence? Let's see. Looks like I'm subtracting like about 30 something, and then I'm subtracting like 12, and then I'm subtracting like 4. So that's nah, not arithmetic. So it's got to be geometric, hopefully. So we're going to take the second one. And I don't take, look, I take the bigger one. You take the second one, which is 18, and you divide it by the first one, which is 54. You get one third. If I take the third one, which is 6, and divide it by 18, I get one third. If I take the fourth one and divide it by the third one, I get one third. So r is equal to one third. So now I'm going to take my formula, a sub n equals first one, which is 54, times one third and minus one. Notice how they're getting smaller. That's why this is a fraction less than one. It's just how it works. Done. 
what is the exact value of the 15th term of the geometric sequence? So they're telling us that this is a geometric sequence. So I got to figure out what r is. So I'm going to take the square root of 10, and I'm going to divide it by the negative square root of 5. Well, this is equal to, let's see, I know it's negative, and 10 divided by 5, since they're both in the radical, is the square root of 2. Let me just make sure that's right. So I'm going to take r equals negative 2 square roots of 5 over the square root of 10. Oh my gosh, that's awful. I know it's negative, but i got to multiply by radical 10 over radical 10, because that's how you rationalize the denominator. So I get negative 2 radical 50 over 10. Well, let's see, 2 goes into 10 5 times. So now I've got negative radical 50 over 5, and radical 50 is, the square root of 50 is really the square root of 25 times 2, so this is really 5, so this is really negative 5 square roots of 2 over 5, the 5's cancel. So yes, this is my common ratio. So I want the a to the nth is equal to, first term is negative square root of 5, negative square root of 2 to the n minus 1. So that's the equation. Ooh, that one's a pain in the neck. So I want a to the 15th. Wow. And I want the exact value of a to the 15th. So what I got to do is this. I'm going to do a to the 15th is equal to negative radical 5 negative radical 2 to the 15 minus 1, which is really negative radical 5, negative radical 2 to the 14th power. Okay, so this isn't that bad. Uh, it's this thing that's the problem. We've got to think about what this is. Now, what is the square root of 2 times the square root of 2? That's just a 2. It's the square root of 4, but it's really just 2. So for every 2 of these, I get a 2. So this, so every, for every 2 of these, I get a 2. And if I had 14 of them lined up, this would be the same thing as, and by the way, negative times negative is positive. And since this is an even exponent, I know it's going to be positive. So I have negative radical 5 times every 2 of these, 2 to the 7th. And 2 to the 7th is 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. So my answer is negative 128 square roots of 5. Now, I would test that. I might be wrong. I don't know. I haven't had a lot of coffee today. I might be wrong. I'm going to type this in right here. I'm going to type in the square root, square root, but I forgot the negative. Negative square root of 5 parenthesis, negative square root of 2, raised to the 14th. Now, it's going to give you some weird decimal, that. By the way, I could have just did this. And I'd see that that's 128. But it doesn't matter. So now I said my answer was, uh, negative 128 square roots of 5. Let's see if that matches this negative 286. It does. There's your answer. Who that's a tough problem. All right, I just took a little break, slid back over here to recursion now. Recursive. Recursive just basically you're just going to follow the sequence. It'll almost always tell you what the first term is. In this case, it's 3. And then for every subsequent term, so this is a sub 2, well, if, if we've got a sub 2, then k has to be 1. k has to be 1. So this would be 2 times a sub 1 minus 1. Well, a sub 1 is just this. So it's really 2 times 3 minus 1, which is 5. Okay, so a sub 2 is 5. Now we're going to do a sub 3. Well, if I've got a sub 3, that means k has to be 2. So that's 2 times a sub 2 minus 1. Well, a sub 2 is really 5. So that's 2 times 5 
minus 1, or 9. Uh, the third term, there's the third term. Now, you can always use your calculator to do this. It's kind of actually cool. Let me get rid of this. If you just type in 3, enter, now 3 stored in answer. And then if you say, okay, I want you to do 2 times the answer, minus 1. 2 times answer, minus 1. Uh, it does recursion, great, minus 1. 5, 9, the next one will be 17, 33, 65, 129. Come on, do them all day. Ninth. The first term is a sub 1 is equal to a half. A sub 2 is equal to a sub 2 minus 1, which is 1, squared. Oh, well, that would be 1 half squared, which would be 1 fourth. What do I want, the fifth term? So that's 3. That would take a sub. Now, this, this is 3. 3 minus 1 is 2, so that's really a sub 2 squared, which is really 1 fourth squared is equal to 1 16th. A sub 4 is really the one before it, 1 over 16 squared. So that's 1 over 256, I think. And then A sub 5, which would be our fifth term, is 1 over 256 squared, which I'm not sure what that is. 1 divided by 256 squared. 1 over 65, 536. 1 over 65, 536. Now let's see if I can do this using recursion on my calculator. I'm going to take 1 divided by 2, and I'm going to store it. No, I'm not going to store it. I'm just going to hit Enter. Then I'm going to say, OK, square it, and 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 square it. <laughs> Holy mackerel, look at the size of that number. That thing's ginormous. That's my salary from last year, just out of curiosity. Yeah, that's what I made. So there's the answer. All right, find the fourth term of this reoccurs. Ooh, now we've got a little bit of more of an issue. So we're going to do a sub 1 is equal to 1. a sub 2, so of course n equals 2 here. a sub 2 is equal to a sub 1, which is 1, plus 2 times n, n is 2 minus 1. So that is 4, and these cancel. So it's 4. So now I get a sub 3 is equal to a sub 2, which is 4, plus 2 times 3, because we're on n equals 3 now, minus 1. So that's 10 minus 1 is 9. And n equals 4 is a sub 4, so we do... 9 plus 2 times 4 minus 1. Let's see, it's 9 plus 8 is, that's just 16. There's your answer. Let's go to 11. Find the fourth term. Now, that last one we couldn't do using the calculator, but this one we can. Find the fourth term. So a sub 0 is equal to 2. I don't know why I do 0. I should be doing 1. It doesn't matter a sub 1 is equal to 3 times the 1 before it, 2, plus 3, 6, 9. a sub 2 is equal to 3 times the 1 before it, 9, plus 3. 3 times 9 is 27, 30. And that would be the, oh, that's the fourth term. That's the third term. a sub 3, which is actually the fourth term, is... 3 times 30 plus 3, 93. And there will be your answer. We're almost done, kids. Let's see how much time I got left. Oh, I got time. What number is that, 11? Any more? No more. Got a couple more. Oh, we're just going to do some. Oh, we got one more recursion. And then find the next. I'm going to guess that should have said four terms. So a sub 1 equals negative 4. Now you got to be careful a little bit. Now I'm just going to do this one using my calculator. So I'm going to clear out everything. Negative 4, enter. And this one says take that one and add 5. Plus 5. 1. So a sub 2 equals 1. Now you can't do that. You have to do negative 4 plus 5 equals 1. a sub 3 
a sub 4, a sub 5. Enter. 6. 1 plus 5 equals 6. It's harder to go over there. 6 plus 5 equals 11. 11 plus 5 equals 16. Enter, enter, done. All right, that's it. That was an easy one. So this one just says evaluate. So we're just going to try this. Plug this in our calculator. Just a little practice using our calculator. I hope I got one that you can't use your calculator on. I hope I put that in here, but I might have forgotten to. So it's 2 plus this, and it's k equals 3. So k equals 3 up to 6. Uh, this one you got to be careful of. You can't do this. What, watch what happens when I do this. K minus 1, and then I try to do squared. Woo! See, it like squares the whole summation thing. That's not what I want. So what you need to do is you need to make sure, ah, here we go, you need to make sure that whatever you put, uh, whatever you put inside of these should be in its own parentheses. So parentheses here and then squared. So that's what it should look like because everything in the parentheses is part of the summation. Enter, I get 56. Now, if you don't know what we're doing here, if you have to do this by hand, you do 2 plus. Now, only one 2 gets added. You, you're adding 2 plus the summation. So the first thing I'm going to do is plug in the 3. 3 minus 1 squared. That's 2 squared, which is 4. Then I'm going to plug in the 4. 4 minus 1 squared. That's 9. Then I'm going to plug in a 5. 5 minus 1 squared is 16. Then I'm going to plug in a 6 minus 1 is 25. If I add these up, let's see, that's 20. And 34, that's 54, plus the original 2, 56. Ah, here we go. I knew I was going to do one. So this one says evaluate. No, I can't put this one in my calculator because, well, I don't have anything for Y. So I have to do this by hand. So it's 10, 10 plus, we're going to add four things. So when X equals 1, it's 3 times 2 times 1 minus Y. Or 3 times 2 is 6 minus 3y. Then it's going to be 3 times 2 times 2 minus y. Well, 2 times 2 is 4 times 3 is 12, so this is 12 minus 3y. And then that's when 1, 2, this is 3, and n equals 3. So 3 times 2 times 3 minus y. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 3 is 18, so it's 18 minus 3y. And finally, 3 times 2 times 4 minus y. 2 times 4 is 8, 8 times 3 is 24, so this is 24 minus 3y. So if I add all of this stuff up right here, I get, let's see, that's 30 and 30, that's 60 minus 12y. But don't forget, i got to add in 10, so plus 10, so I get 70 minus 12y. And that would be my final answer for that one. And then this one I could use my calculator, but we're going to do it by hand first. 20 plus, now we're going to have six equations. 8 times 1 minus 1, 8 times 2 minus 1, 8 times 3 minus 1, 8 times 4 minus 1, 8 times 5 minus 1, and 8 times 6 minus 1. Don't forget, this is our beginning number. This is our ending number. Let's see. Eight minus one is seven. 16 minus one is 15. 24 minus one is 23. This should be 31. This should be 39. This should be 47. Whew. Let's see, seven, 12, 15, 16, 25, 32, 3, 4, 5, 6, 9, 12, 
16, 162. So I'm going to guess the answer is 182 because I have to add this 20 on. Let's. See. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Let's crazy train. It's 20 minus. So it's 20 minus 162. So that should be negative 142. Ooh, maybe let's see what we got. So crazy button, crazy. Oh, I forgot to put the 20 minus. 20 minus. Uh, what do we use? N. So it doesn't matter what letter you use. N. 1. 8. N. Minus 1. 6. Negative 142. Woo! That's it, kids. That's all show. Bodied. All right. I had fun with you. I hope you had fun here learning mathematics with Mr. Krause. Could it be any better? It's almost summer, kids. You got to keep working hard. You got to keep trying hard. No quit. No quit. Work your butt off and then enjoy your summer vacation. Otherwise, you may see my ugly mug in the summer school and you don't want that. Goodbye, kids. Have fun storming the castle.